Hello YouTube, this is Neon and today the title of my talk is going to be U.S. Privilege. For anybody watching the first time, I do this little spin around um, to keep my screen in full screen and so that it does not have the black sidebars. Um, that's the only way I know how to do it and I upload all my videos from my cell phone. U.S. Privilege. U.S. Privilege and what I'm just going to talk and share my thoughts about U.S. privilege. U.S. privilege is the fact that we can count on having potable drinking water, enough to drink, as much as we want to drink, and pretty much we can get it for free. I believe, okay, this is what I've seen online, 99% of the U.S. population has enough potable drinking water. That's U.S. privilege. That's something that... I would say the majority of the world's population cannot count on year-round. So they have to deal with all kinds of waterborne illnesses because their water is not clean. It's not, I believe the word is potable. It's not clean enough for them to drink without getting potentially cholera or any other kind of life-threatening illness or disease or an illness or disease that in fact does take their life. U.S. privilege is also being able to get enough calories to sustain oneself, to get enough food to sustain oneself. This could be <clears throat> beans, rice, and Jesus Christ. So sometimes those of us who have had to or who, or who currently have to go to food distributions some, that's really what they offer is beans and rice. If we can afford seasoning, you know, pinto beans can actually taste good. That's another thing that in many parts of the world, people cannot count on is getting enough calories to maintain their body. Let alone the variety of food for a healthy diet. That's U.S. privilege. That's something that just about everyone in the U.S can count on. This is not including people who suffer from addiction. The addiction may have taken over their life and eating doesn't become a priority. I know two people who died essentially of starvation related to their struggle with addiction to drugs. They didn't eat. And of course people who suffer from things like anorexia. But in terms of having access to food, just about everyone in the US one way or another can get enough calories. Not necessarily the wide variety of food for a healthy hearty life, but certainly they, they can get enough calories. Much of the world on a year-round basis cannot count on that. That is U.S. privilege. And that is what I mean by U.S. privilege. It's something that some people have, have dared to say that the homeless, right, I don't like that term, men and women, boys and girls who are homeless, they've got it better than 50% of the world's population. And a lot of that, I assume, is because they can get free drinking water at a park. If they have to at a public restroom. As I said, most of the world's population cannot count on that. And generally, women, men and women who are homeless, as well as boys and girls, can get enough calories. I don't I think that to say that is very inhumane and not it's not helpful at all. It is not helpful at all to look at the plight of a person who's homeless and then minimize their plight by comparing it to someone else. So I want to make it clear in this talk that I'm not trying to say if you have problems, look, there's starving children in Africa or starving children in Bangladesh or India don't complain about your problems other people got it worse your problems don't matter that's a common philosophy if you want to call it that that people use I call it living one's life by comparison and it's not a philosophy that I believe in I do not believe in that and in fact there are people, for example, with mental illness who commit suicide, 
And so they lose their life. So if you want to talk about someone who's starving to death in Africa, we need to understand that mental illness can be fatal. And there are people who are hanging by a thread psychologically and emotionally. And I do take that seriously. And I think we need to be cautious about comparisons. If comparisons cause us to help other people, then it serves a purpose. I am convinced that the universe, the God of, all, of our understanding, something that's out there, whatever, however we may want, want to define it, Darwin, whoever, if we are giving and helping other people and those people aren't giving anything back to us, we, first of all, we have helped ourselves more than we've helped them, period. If they are not giving us anything back in return. And then, of course, we've helped them through what we've given them. So in that respect, if we know we can stop drinking or maybe eating out, right, for one or two lunches during the week and save however many dollars, and as a result, sponsor one or two children through any of these child sponsoring uh, charities, we can, and we can save a life, then those comparisons serve a purpose. We're blessing ourselves more than we are blessing the children that we are making sure get enough calories every day because of the blessings that the universe will bring back to us or the God of our understanding will bring back to us. And then, of course, we're saving a human life. So those comparisons can be helpful in that respect. One person who was wealthy and he talked about how he's wealthy, he doesn't really have anything to complain about, and when when he does feel depressed because he's wealthy and has it all, he doesn't have any reason to feel depressed, so what he will do is go and drive around where homeless people are, people who are homeless, and he will no longer feel bad about his plight because he sees the plight of these folks that are homeless and it makes him feel better about himself because he sees how much better he has it than other people. To me, that is not helpful and it is not constructive. The reason is that, first of all, whatever his pain is needs to be dealt with, in, in my view, in my opinion, it's best to be dealt with by dealing with that pain. If it's an emotional pain, if it's a physical pain, if I have a headache, I'm not going to drive to go and see people who are homeless and say, well, their plight's worse than my headache, so now my headache goes away. No. That's how people treat emotional and mental pain. They treat it as something that's not real. So they'll do that. They'll make a comparison, and then they can suppress whatever emotion, depression, or whatever they're going through. And as a result, he winds up going to people who are homeless, and in my opinion, it, it, this is kind of a negative spin on what he was saying, but it is as if he's going to people who are homeless and then stealing from them without even asking. He feels bad about himself, and he believes that by seeing homeless people and driving around uh, homeless people, probably in his luxury car, that that makes him get rid of his emotional pain. He doesn't ask their permission. He just drives around where there are people who are homeless and uses them to make himself feel better. It didn't inspire him. At least he didn't share this. He didn't share that it inspired him to want to help other people, to help people who are homeless, to help people who are homeless who may need to be taken care of for years until they are mentally, emotionally, and physically capable of taking care of themselves, perhaps paying for their education, perhaps paying their living expenses. He didn't talk about being motivated to really make change in the lives of the people who were homeless. He just talked about stealing from them. Again, that's my word. That's my negative spin. I apologize. So that he could feel better emotionally. And in my opinion, he probably was just some suppressing those emotions. However, if he had helped these folks that are homeless, it would have made him feel better, at least a little bit. It's not, helping other people is not a cure-all for life. 
I'm not suggesting that, but it is, it is a very key ingredient to living a prosperous life. And by prosperity, I'm talking about health, longevity, happiness, psychological soundness. I'm not just talking about material. Material prosperity is, is a part of the overall scheme of prosperity. But at about fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 a year, we reach our limit in terms of what money can do for us emotionally. We've reached our limit in terms of how much happiness money can buy. I saw a documentary where they talk about the difference between a person who is homeless versus a person who makes $50,000 a year in the amount of happiness that they experience, it's light years away. But the person who's fi making $50,000 a year and the person who's making $50 million a year, the amount of happiness between those two is just a sliver. So we know that after about $50,000, $60,000 a year, money can no longer buy happiness. Right? We're just, we're just deceived if we, we're, we're not living in reality if we believe that by having millions alone we're going to have it all we're going to have a life that is prosperous again emotionally psychologically um in in all of these ways in terms of happiness so i think that the only good things about comparisons in my in my view is one to know that one is that it helps me not to become so self-absorbed that I believe that my pro I'm the only person who's suffering. That's not realistic and that's not in reality. So sometimes making comparisons, whether someone's suffering, you know, perceived, okay, perceived to be suffering less than me or more than me, knowing that I'm not alone does bring me a little bit of comfort knowing that I'm not the only person suffering. That's one thing where it can be helpful knowing that there are other people suffering. I'm not alone. Whether I am around these folks or not, it doesn't matter. Knowing that they're suffering as well makes me know, hey, I'm not alone, so I don't have to be so self-absorbed and act like I'm suffering as the only person suffering, and then I'm suffering more than everybody else, and I have it harder than everybody else. That kind of blows things out of proportion a little bit. So that hopefully it can reduce my amount of suffering by not... It get, letting it get so exaggerated that it's like I'm the center of the universe. And then, when I do see that there are people who are suffering more than me, being motivated to help them is also very helpful. So the, the children that I sponsor, knowing that these children will get enough calories on a daily basis to, to reach puberty and to become young adults and then have a real fighting chance at having a decent life and living to life expectancy, that helps them, that helps me because the universe brings so many blessings to me. Those, so comparing in that sense, if it motivates me to help another person, that's a good thing as well. Again, it helps them and it helps me more than it's going to help them. And it's important to know that the blessings that come, it's, they don't necessarily have dollar signs on them. You know, there's happiness, there's psychological wellness, there's emotional wellness, there's rela relational wellness, just getting along, whether it's with co-workers, family members, extended family, strangers, right? The, all of these things are blessings. So blessings don't, I had to learn this, that blessings don't just come with a dollar sign attached. Because that's what I thought was going to happen when I started paying my tithes and then my offerings. Then I started sponsoring children because I thought, I can't expect none back from these children. They will say thank you once a year. Right? You get a little note saying thank you. And little hints like, can you send extra money? <laughs> Sometimes they do that too. Uh, but I knew that that was a purer way of giving because I couldn't make any demands on, on people who I was giving to. I wasn't getting anything back in return besides a thank you. But I had to learn the hard way that no, yeah, God is blessing me for giving in many immaterial ways, but they ain't got dollar signs on them. So that's my, my thought on U.S. privilege. I was going to talk about some other things, but I'm out of time. If you like this video, and I will in the future, for those of you beautiful people who want to know, please like, subscribe, share, comment commercials, recommend my videos, do one or more of those things. Thank you. Best wishes.